Welcome. Today we are going to discuss healthy relationships and sexuality, supporting people with intellectual disabilities. Um, it's going to be presented by myself, Suzanne Walsh. I am uh, the Inclusive Education Coordinator uh, here at MBACL. So having healthy relationships, understanding sexuality and safety is important for all of us. In order to have a better understanding of how to support people with an intellectual disability regarding these topics, we are going to look at the following three areas. Okay, number one, feelings and self-esteem. Number two, healthy relationships and sexuality. And three, exploring boundaries, trust, and ways to keep safe. We're going to look at some st statistics. Why education is so important. So education regarding healthy, rela healthy relationships, sexuality, self-esteem, and boundaries is so important to those with an intellectual disability. The statistics demonstrate that. These are actually Canadian statistics. So if you look at, it, look at it, Canadian girls and women with a disability are up to 10 times more likely to be sexually assaulted than other girls and women. Canadian boys and men with a disability are between four to 10 times more likely. During their lifetimes, 83% of women and 40% of men with an intellectual disability are sexually abused. Before they turn 18, 40 to 70% of girls with an intellectual disability will be sexually exploited. 49% of those persons who have been sexually abused will experience it 10 or more times. In 97% of cases, persons know their abusers. More than 45% of the assailants are doctors, teachers, caregivers, and others related to disability supports. And more than 30% are parents, family members, and friends. Fewer than 4% of sexual assaults on women and girls with an intellectual disability are reported and even less are charged. The Evidence, Evidence Act allows defense lawyers to challenge a person's mental, mental capacity to understand what it means to take an oath to tell the truth and promise not to tell a lie. Those with an intellectual disability are the only people other than children who can be questioned about their understanding of the duty to tell the truth. Many education programs teach persons with intellectual disability to be compliant, leaving them even further vulnerable. Things we need to keep in mind. Every person is a sexual being. Sexuality refers to our thoughts, attitudes, and behaviors toward ourselves and toward others. Our responsibility and goals for learners. So ensure that learners are provided with accurate information about human sexuality and or where to find it. Provide opportunities for learners to develop a strong sense of who they are, explore and increase their self-esteem, identify and respond positively to their own feelings, and to assume responsibility for thinking about their own futures as social and sexual beings. Help learners to communicate effectively, to make decisions, and to be assertive so that they may have satisfying relationships. Help learners to recognize when other people are using or hurting them and to learn ways to keep themselves safe from being used or otherwise harmed. Considerations before teaching sexuality related issues. So some things you might wanna consider, personal feelings and values, so it says not imposing on others and unrealistic. So generally people who teach others need to be mindful of their personal values and attempt not to impose these on others. In some circumstances, this may be difficult or unrealistic. For example, if you're teaching your child, you may want your child to develop a similar set of personal values. In addition, personal values such as respect for others and respect for individual rights are values that are themselves socially important. The next is knowledge about sexuality. So adequate and accurate, sexual development, puberty, human anatomy, and STDs. So people teaching others about sexuality will be much more effective when they have adequate and accurate knowledge. This knowledge could involve having good information about, about human anatomy, 
sexual development, puberty, sexually transmitted infections, and so on. Our next point is social and relationship aspects. So healthy relationships, communication, being assertive, understanding of appropriate touch, talk, and trust. So knowledge regarding the social and relationship aspects of sexuality is also really important. This will involve knowledge about healthy relationships, communication, and being assertive, as well as understanding of appropriate taught, touch, talk, and trust in a variety of relationships. And our last point, feeling comfortable with it without embarrassment. So being prepared for some level of discomfort, knowing your own comfort level, and of course, practice. Talking about sexuality-related issues may make some people feel uncomfortable or embarrassed. Anyone who is teaching information to others should be prepared for some level of discomfort. You need to think about your own comfort level, and a little practice in discussing these issues will likely help. The more practice, even simple strategies like reading passages about sexuality education out loud, the more comfortable and natural it will feel. Now we're going to talk about the language of sexuality. So most people find the use of sexual language very difficult. Usually we use euphemistic terms such as wee wee, booby, boobies. Important to be specific and concrete in the use of language. So there are four main types of language when it comes to the language of sexuality. There's medical, childhood, street, and indirect language. So medical language, children are not taught nicknames for their elbows or knees. So why resort to nicknames for breasts or penis? Teaching real words tells them there's nothing wrong with having or talking about any parts of their body. The limitations here are that certain medical terms may be cumbersome such as nocturnal emissions, as opposed to wet dreams. Childhood language, these are words that are generally easy for young children to say, and people feel comfortable using them because they remember them from their own childhoods. P is more natural than saying urine. Belly button strikes us as a happy, positive word rather than navel. The limitations with this language, other childhood words convey great discomfort about sexuality, and may prove difficult to unlearn as children grow up. For example, it would be quite inappropriate for an adult male with an intellectual disability to refer to his penis as a wee-wee. Our third type of language, street language. Many people like to use street language at times because of its bold, suggestive quality, like in locker rooms. It is the language of the bedroom and sometimes of graffiti. Street language in the form of swear words help many people to release tension and feelings of frustration. The limitations, individuals will meet with strong disapproval if he or she uses street language in places where it is not appropriate. It can objectify people, females especially, and describe sex as something done to someone rather than with someone. And the last type of language, indirect language. Many individuals prefer indi indirect language in a number of situations. Examples, a little girl is taught down there instead of vulva. Your toes are also down there. And this can be very confusing to individuals. Another example, sleeping together instead of sexual intercourse. So having healthy relationships and understanding sexuality is important for all of us. In order to have a better understanding of how to support people with an intellectual disability regarding healthy relationships and sexuality, we are going to look at the following three themes. We are going to look at feelings and self-esteem, healthy relationships and sexuality, exploring boundaries, trust, and ways to keep safe. So part one, feelings and self-esteem. During part one of this three-part series, I will discuss identifying and responding to feelings, what feelings look like, as well as dealing with and expressing our feelings and emotions. We will also look at awareness of sexual and gender diversity, major stages of development in puberty. The importance of having individuals become concrete learners will be discussed as well. Identifying and dealing with sexual feelings and personal hygiene will be reviewed along with skills and a few things to keep in mind. So identifying and responding to feelings. So identifying the four major feelings, happiness, sadness, anger, and fear. Recognizing ways in which feelings are expressed. 
Feelings are neither wrong nor right. It is the way we express them that is important. And purposeless feelings, what they are saying to us. So there are four major feelings. Depending on your learner, you may want to give them a brief age-appropriate description, an example to go along with each of the major feelings. And you may also want to discuss the purpose of feelings. We can ask ourselves what our feelings are telling us about our current circumstances, the purpose of feelings. We can ask ourselves what our feelings are telling us about our current circumstances or situation. For example, feelings of sadness may help us understand what we care about, and feelings associated with fear help us understand that we may need to take action to protect ourselves. Identifying other feelings, learning that feelings can be managed, identifying and modeling strategies for dealing with feelings in positive ways, Recognize that sometimes people may need help dealing with their feelings. Discuss what other feelings the learner may experience or be experiencing. Some examples, excited, surprised, guilty, jealous, hopeful, worried, embarrassed. Learning that feelings can be managed. Learning how to respond to feelings in positive ways can greatly affect how we feel about ourselves and our relationships with others. Feelings are experienced in the context of a variety of situations and how people treat us. Let your learner know that sometimes feelings can be so intense or long-lasting that people sometimes require special forms of help. So what do feelings look like? So they can uh, be expressed through facial expressions, body language, or actions. So facial expressions, an activity. You could ask your learner, what do sadness, anger, fear, and happiness look like? Also, what do sadness, anger, fear, and happiness sound like? Feelings can be expressed through actions as well. A good example, you're at a sporting event and you're excited. You may stand up with your hands in the air and cheer for your favorite team. Dealing with and expressing our feelings and emotions. So we need to realize that this is a lifelong process, is learned by observing others, is a result of interactions with others, a variety of situations, treatment from others, and is a complex issue that may require special forms of help to learn and deal positively with feelings and emotions. Learning to deal with and respond to our emotions is a lifelong process. Many of us learn to respond to our feelings by observing other people. As children, we watch how our parents and other adults express their feelings. This learning may give us both positive and negative examples or models or ways to deal with our feelings. We need to discuss with our learners appropriate ways to deal and express our feelings and emotions. Now we are going to look at awareness of sexual and gender diversity. So sexual orientation tells us about attraction. Gender identity tells us about who someone is, and sex tells us about physical anatomy. Everyone has each of these three characteristics. None of these characteristics is more important than any other. Some learners may identify as male or female. However, we must remember that some of our learners will not identify or fit into one category. We need to let our learners know that it is okay to be who they are and to feel how they feel about themselves when it comes to sexual and gender diversity. We must discuss with our learners that some may identify as he, she, or they, which is gender neutral. There are organizations such as AIDS New Brunswick and sexual health clinics through Vitalité or Horizon Health Networks that can provide extra support to our learners, their families, and schools if needed. Although we may identify differently when it comes to sexual orientation, gender identity and sex, every person is a human being. And we're gonna talk about education, training and support. So we may identify differently with regards to sexual orientation, gender, identity, sex. However, we are all human beings and as such deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. No matter what sexual orientation, gender identity, or sex our learners identify with, it is important that they, and possibly their parents and teachers, receive the proper education, information, and training, as well as support. We need to keep in mind that there is often a stigma when it comes to our learners 
and their sexual orientation, gender diversity, and sex. So skills needed, language and communication skills for talking about sexual orientation, gender, and sex, skills for identifying the differences between gender identity, he, she, they, including self-awareness regarding gender identity. Depending on your learner, this may be a more complex skill set, perhaps if they're questioning or if they're struggling in any of these areas. Remember to discuss with your learner, there are a variety of ways in which people identify and that that is okay. So relating to myself. So identify the changes as we grow and develop. Identify puberty as a time of important changes, both physically and emotionally, and recognize that the development of sexual feelings is a normal part of puberty. Given the significance of the changes that occur during puberty, it is important that individuals have accurate information about these changes as early as possible. This will help to avoid misunderstanding and confusion and will also help individuals approach these important changes in healthy and positive ways. If necessary, this information can be used with older learners who may benefit from a better understanding of the physical and emotional changes that they may have already experienced. Things we need to keep in mind. So privacy needs to be reinforced. Make sure that the learning takes place in a private setting. This will be a place where learning can take place without being interrupted and where people feel safe and as comfortable as possible talking about private issues. The second thing is to reinforce ground rules for learning. It is important that everyone feels safe and comfortable. Discussing that everyone has different feelings, ideas, and opinions is okay, and that those are to be respected. It may be important to recognize that some people will be embarrassed by topics. One way that people deal with embarrassment is by laughing. Laughter should only be discouraged when it may be seen as making fun of someone else or when you think it is interfering with the learning. Major stages of development. So we have infancy, childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Assist learners to identify the main differences in the four stages, including height, weight, body shape, and muscle development changes in both males and females. Now we're gonna discuss puberty. So puberty is a time of change for all people. Puberty means that we are growing up and are changing from a child into an adult. Changes during puberty are gradual. People begin puberty at different ages. Girls usually begin puberty before boys. Identify some of the changes that occur during puberty for boys and girls. Puberty is an important time of transition and change for everyone. Being aware of these changes and what they mean can help make puberty a positive time rather than a confusing one. When identifying some of the changes that occur during puberty, assist learners to identify which changes happen only to girls, only to boys, and to both boys and girls. Some examples, increase in height, broadening of shoulders, broadening of hips, development of pubic hair, development of facial hair, etc. Make sure you stress that these changes are normal for everyone and may take up to four or five years to complete. Having individuals become concrete learners, so introducing appropriate vocabulary for issues such as menstruation and ejaculation and reproduction. So review body parts, review vocabulary, identify sexual feelings and dealing with them. So when it comes to menstruation, learning about menstruation involves having information about internal parts of the body and the vocabulary used to describe these parts. Some learners may have a difficult time understanding the words or concepts. It may be necessary to simplify the information. It is important that learners be assisted to understand that the monthly discharge of blood that begins during puberty is a normal activity for females and is not dangerous. Introduce the vocabulary and their meanings, ovary, human egg, uterus. Explain what happens during menstruation. Discuss how women may feel during menstruation, may experience cramps, tiredness, moodiness. Ejaculation. For males, ejaculation is a major part of puberty. They may need information to help understand the vocabulary and process of ejaculation. Introduce the vocabulary and their meanings, copper's gland, semen, sperm, erection. Explain what happens during ejaculation. 
semen comes out of the end of the male penis, usually when he has an erection. Explain how ejaculation happens, that there are three main ways. So number one, during sleep, nocturnal emission or wet dream. Number two, when the penis is rubbed as during masturbation. And number three, during sexual intercourse. Point out that ejaculation is a private activity that should only happen in private places, such as their bedroom or washroom at home with the door closed. And lastly, roles in reproduction. So review body parts, review the concept of fertilization, and review the development of a fetus. So identifying and dealing with sexual feelings. So sexual feelings can be confusing. Sexual feelings involve thinking about other people and ourselves in different ways than we did when we were younger. It is natural to have sexual feelings. How we deal with these feelings is important. And we're going to talk about masturbation. So when you're identifying sexual feelings, in terms of thinking about and dealing with sexual feelings, individuals should have some basic information. For some learners, this information may have to be further simplified. Discuss what sexual feelings might involve. A good example, being more interested or thinking about our genitals or private parts and the private parts of other people, or developing strong feelings or crushes for other people. Discuss with learners that both male and females have the same kind of sexual feelings and thoughts. Also stress that sexual feelings are normal. Some people do not have feelings during puberty. This is also normal. So dealing with sexual feelings. Assist learners to understand that many people have sexual thoughts or feelings that they do not act upon or do anything about, and that this is okay. Also, that acting on sexual feelings by touching ourselves or another person with his or her permission in a sexual way is something that is done in a private place and not in a public place. Masturbation. Explain what masturbation is when we touch our genitals or private parts to feel good. Both males and females, for both males and females, masturbation can, but not always, lead to an orgasm. For males, this involves a good physical feeling and ejaculation. For females, this also involves a good feeling, including breathing faster and getting wet around the vagina. Some important things to remember about masturbation. Many people believe that masturbation is all right to do. Some people choose not to masturbate. And this is all right as well. Sometimes this involves personal values and beliefs. If a learner is confused about this, suggest they talk it over with an adult they trust. And masturbation is always something that is done in a private place, with the door closed and when we are alone. It must never be done in a public place. Now we're going to look at personal hygiene. So identify what good hygiene means and what it involves the consequences of not meeting it and maintaining good personal hygiene, products used and when, and to recognize that the onset of puberty involves additional responsibilities regarding hygiene. So inform learners that hygiene means keeping our bodies clean and healthy. Discuss with, the, discuss with learners what is involved in good hygiene. You, you could record the answers given. Ensure that some or all of the following aspects are covered. Keeping our bodies clean, keeping our clothes clean and wearing clean clothes, keeping our mouth clean and looking after our teeth and getting exercise. Talk to the learners about why good hygiene is important. It helps us feel good about ourselves, helps others feel good about us, and helps to keep us healthy. You may want to review hygiene products. Review the various products or things we use to help keep clean and look neat. This may be different depending on the age of the learner. You can gather the various hygiene products you will need. You may need to include mouthwash, dental floss, toothbrush, toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, brush, comb, nail brush, nail clippers, nail file, soap, face cloth, deodorant, shaving products, hand and body lotion, makeup, and menstrual supplies. Now we're gonna discuss menstrual hygiene. So learning about menstrual hygiene should be reinforced at home in the bathroom. Emphasize the private nature of menstrual hygiene. Display and discuss menstrual supplies. Note the following information. Menstrual supplies are purchased in a drugstore, grocery store, and some department stores. One type of supply is called a sanitary napkin.
This is worn outside the body, but inside the female's underwear or other undergarments. The napkin catches the blood from the vagina. It is worn when the person is having her period. Another type of supply is called a tampon. This is inserted into the vagina to absorb and catch the blood before it comes out. Tampons should be changed when they are full or every four to six hours. Review when to use supplies. Demonstrate to learners that using a calendar can be helpful in predicting when a period will start. Model and practice the disposal of menstrual supplies. Using red food coloring and actual supplies, demonstrate the proper way to dispose of used supplies by folding and wrapping the supplies in toilet paper. Also demonstrate where the wrapped used supplies should be discarded. Have or assist learners practice proper disposal. Make sure to include hand washing. Review the private nature of good menstrual hygiene. Menstrual care should be done in a bathroom with the door closed. Review the fact that menstruation is a normal activity for females. So some skills, exploring what germs are and how we can pass them around and or make ourselves sick. Hand washing exercise and sneezing coughing exercise, use of pictures for more concrete learners and reviewing hygiene products. So explain to learners about how germs can cause illness or make us sick and the importance of good hygiene. Explain the importance of hand washing and how to do this properly as well as when you sneeze or cough, that you should cover your nose or mouth so you do not spread germs. Thank you for attending part one of this three-part series. In part two, we will be looking at healthy relationships and sexuality.